Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Eating While Broke. I'm your host, Colleen Witt, and today we have very special guest, famous YouTuber, Alicia Bernie, producer, writer, director. Alicia Bernie's in the building, and I'm excited to hear your story because it's it's a long journey for you. Yeah, it is. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Mm -hmm. And what are you going to have me eating today on the show? Nachos, like hood nachos. So, yeah, basically, whatever you got in the cabinet, I just combine all four ingredients together. And what are the ingredients? Sour cream, salsa. Um, you can use tortilla chips, like regular tortillas, but today we're going to use Doritos mm -hmm. and uh, shredded cheese. Oh, do you usually use tortilla chip chips or you only um, do the Dorito Cool Ranch? Honestly, it's whatever chips I can find. But, like, yeah. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Any chips? Any chips. Okay. It's always chips. Okay. Somewhere. Have you ever done it with like Cheetos? Mm -mm. I don't like Cheetos. Not even the puffy one? Oh, no, you're tripping. Maybe okay, well, we're going to have to judge this dish hard. <laughs> so um, before, we, well, I guess while you, um, another thing I wanted to share with uh, you guys is that uh, Alicia said that she only usually does this dish in the microwave. Yep. Which is interesting because mm -hmm. I would assume the chips get hot. They do. But you don't, like, they're not in there for a long time. It's probably like 30 seconds to a minute. Okay. Just to melt the cheese. And then today, you're going to take one for the team and cook it on the stovetop. I am. Okay. All right. So get into the, the cooking of the cheese so I can eat. Cook uh, the cheese? Yes. And then what was going on around the time when you're making this dish? Um, Actually, my mom, I mean, my auntie, she taught me how to make this. Like, one day I called her. I was like, I'm hungry. Because it was never no food at home. Mm -hmm. And then she was, like, asking me, like, what's all in the house? And then she told me, like, literally to combine these four ingredients. And I did. How old were you at the time? Probably, like, nine. And, you know, I could only really cook in the microwave or else I was going to get in trouble. So you was, like, walking around the house like, hey, there's some chips here. There's some shredded cheese. Uh -huh. and, and she was like, oh, combine um, all four. And I was like, okay. And okay. Then, yeah. Now, are you a cook at home by nature? Oh, uh, yeah, I am. Cooking okay. is like my love language. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, if I cook for you, I love you. When did you start getting into writing and producing? Um, So, I started off with sketch comedy. Oh, we should get our chips ready. Like, really? Uh-huh. Uh do, do however put you some do. More. Yeah, put a lot of cheese. I should just cook. Cook all the cheese. Cook all of it. Yeah. But yeah, I started getting started with writing and producing. I was very young when I started like doing uh, comedy sketches. I was like 11. I started on Facebook, like I would hack into my, not necessarily hack, but my mom was logged into her Facebook account on the laptop. So I would um, log in there and I would just upload videos of myself to her Facebook page. Of course I got in trouble. I'm not supposed to be doing stuff like that. Mm. But um, after that, I just started, I kept going with like the comedy sketches. Then I was like, I want to like take it more serious. So last year, I write, produced, directed, and acted in, and filmed my own uh, short film. Mm -hmm. And then ever since then, I just keep like producing films. But take it back to when you were, you said 11, mm -hmm. when you started. What inspired you to get into comedy, even think of comedy sketches? So my mom, she would like always be playing like Kevin Hart and stuff. I thought he was so funny. Still to this day, I think he's very funny. Mm -hmm. And, um... I don't know, it made me want to like kind of like be like him because mm -hmm. I would always see him like on the TV. She would just replay the comedy stuff back to back. And then, um, wait, what was the question? I was saying, take me back to what inspired you to oh, do the comedy. Do, yeah. Um, I used to watch, um, this is a commentary on YouTube, Trey mm -hmm. Melvin. Mm -hmm. I used to also watch Delano Edwards. Um, who else? There's one more other one. Um, T. Pendale. I mm -hmm. used to watch all three of them on mm -hmm. YouTube. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, wow. Like, I wanted to create content just like them. Because mm -hmm. I thought their content was so funny. So it inspired me. And they were short skits at the time? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then what was, do you remember, like, one of your first skits that actually did well? Um, it was actually a story time. It wasn't really a skit. But it popped off my channel. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying to think of the first skit that made me. 
I think it was types of workers. Mm -hmm. Like I just, I think I was like 17. Mm -hmm. And I did this skit like types of workers. It was just me like um, pretending to be a worker and also playing the character as well. So mm -hmm. I played like two Yeah, I noticed characters. you'll play different characters. Mm -hmm. And while you're doing all this, what is your mom saying about this passion that you're developing? Um, she wouldn't really say much. Like um, she was just like, I was a kid. She was just like, oh, you know. Like, she didn't really say much. Mm -hmm. But I did have some people, like, telling me, like, oh, you need to stop. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I was a kid, so I don't know. Some people was, like, saying stop. Because mm -hmm. I used to start, like, cussing in the skits as mm -hmm. well. But then it's, like, once they saw it, it was, like, working for me, like, making money and, mm -hmm. like, doing, you know, beneficial stuff. Mm -hmm. Everybody kind of, like. Started supporting it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then what were your friends thinking when you were getting into that at that age? Hmm. I don't know. Were they I would like force them to be in stuff, like oh. me and my skits. So um, I don't think, I don't know. I really don't know what they were thinking. Were, now, when you were doing this, this was before Vine and all those guys came out, correct? Uh huh. But I also uh, hopped on the Vine wagon as well. You did? How well did you do on Vine? Um, by the time I like really started popping off, I think I had like 30,000 followers. I was in the eighth grade with like 30,000 followers on Vine. Um, it was people at school like telling me like I'm full of BS like it's never gonna happen for me because I would come to school and be like oh everybody subscribe to my YouTube channel mm -hmm. yeah they would just talk stuff but now it's like all those people they support now wow yeah now where were you at when you got your first check from YouTube I was at home I remember my first uh, big check well actually my first check in general. What grade was I? I was in the 12th. It was senior year of high school, and I got, like, a $500 check. And to me, that's a lot because I was yeah. working at the time at hy V. Do you know what hy V is? No. I was, like, a grocery store in Missouri. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I was working oh, you're there. not even from out here. Mm -mm. Where are you from? Kansas City, okay. Missouri. Kansas City. Kansas City be coming up on this show a couple times. Okay. Yeah. I saw Bobby was on here. He's yeah, from Kansas yeah. City, too. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. he, 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 he was an interesting interview. I don't know if you heard it yet, but, yeah, he's interesting. So you're in Kansas City, you're in the 12th grade, and at what point did you get the, the notification from YouTube to monetize the channel? Um, so I started YouTube at a very young age, and the rules were like different then. Mm -hmm. My channel was monetized since I was like 16, mm -hmm. but I wasn't making any money because I didn't have any views like, mm -hmm. like at the time. But then when I finally got views and stuff, um, they gave me my first $500 check in the 12th grade. I was so happy. And then I was like, it was in 2020 when COVID had hit. I mm -hmm. transferred colleges. Um, and I was just so like depressed. And I was like praying to God. I was like, God, like, like if you give me enough money, like I'll literally leave Missouri and I'll move to LA like to pursue my dreams. Like that's all I really wanted at the time. Mm -hmm. So that next month I got a $2,500 check. 2500 is a lot from like YouTube. Heck yeah. And me. but at this point you're you're in college. Mm -hmm. You're not you're past high school. So you get your yeah. $500 check and you're what are you going to college for? Digital media production. Okay. Mm -hmm. And at this point are you still recording on iPhones? Are you buying your own equipment? How are you taping? Um, I would record on uh my iPhone. Like I never bought equipment till this year. Till I moved here, I started taking everything more more serious. Okay. Yeah, you may want to put that in that bowl or something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Are you ready to dump the cheese? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Let's do it. Make you make excited? us some hood hood shows. Yeah. Hood shows. Okay. Hood go shows, ahead. not shows. All right. Go ahead. Not shows. Okay. So first, you mean to make make yours? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know if you dump it in the bowl or how you're gonna do it. Oh, should we do that? No, Let's, I don't use. Okay. No. Okay. Here, just go ahead. You want me to Here, I'll do it. Okay. Just a bunch of chips, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then just lay them mm -hmm. out. Just mm -hmm. like spread them out. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Then what? We dump the cheese? Uh-huh. Well, let me get some more. Yeah, we got to put a lot. Get into hood shows. Hood shows. Okay. Y'all make this whenever y'all are hungry and high. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to turn off that stove. Oh, yes. I don't want to burn myself. Mm-mm. Oh, we wow. don't want you to burn yourself. Yeah. Wow, that's a, and that's how the cheese comes out. That's thick. That is thick. Mm-hmm. All this oil. That's enough cheese. So 
while you're in college, uh, you're praying for this window of opportunity, but you're in Missouri still? Mm-hmm. I'm just going to dump this. Oh, yeah, it's very oily. Yeah. Is that how it usually comes out when it's out of the microwave? No. Okay. Let me put this back on the stove. Oh. Ooh. I don't know what I was Ooh. thinking. I'm glad you didn't wow, give it to me. Wow, that would have been the first live burn on the show. We okay, so salsa. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lather mine. And then what? Sour cream? Yep. So you're in college. You're praying for a miracle. But you do know that your end result is you want to come to Los Angeles. Yes. So my dad, he moved here like when I was like two. Mm -hmm. And he was out here. He was pursuing his dreams of becoming like a comedian. Mm -hmm. Also like writing, directing as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is what it looks like. Yeah, it looks good. It looks official. So he's pursuing his dreams. And is he telling you like the whole time, like you should come to L.A.? And um, Yeah, he was. But um, was your mom with it? No, no, <laughs> not at all. Um, which I'm glad everything played out the way it did. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to move down here when I was younger mm -hmm. because I just love the idea of LA. Because did you my... did you come and visit before when mm -hmm. your dad was here? I visited first for a cruise, and then I got a um, um, while and now had hit me up. They were like, "We want you to come down and audition at one of the locations." It was either New, York, I think New York. Atlanta, and then it was L.A. And, and I was like... They directly hit you up. And uh -huh. you're in college. Yeah, I was 19 when they mm -hmm. hit me up. I was like... So you were making little waves. Yeah. I okay. started coming up. We got to try this before the cheese Yeah, we dry. should. Before it gets hard. Pretty good. Mm-hmm. I feel like the cheese is thick, though. It is thick. Mm-hmm. I like this, though. You like it that thick? Mm-hmm. I like it better in the microwave, but I like it on the stove too. I'm gonna be honest. Mm -hmm. These hood shows would taste good with just the salsa and the sour cream. Don't you think so? Mm -hmm. I, I agree. I don't even think you need the cheese. Well, I don't think I'll ever eat Doritos plain again. Cause this is amazing. Thank you. I'm gonna take one more bite. Take a bow. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> okay, put those made up. Really affordable dish, fun snack. Y'all, this is the best meal on the show thus far. So, yeah. <laughs> we're not going to say that, but we're going to give it a 10 out of a 10. So it's up there. Am I the runner up, though? You're a runner up. Like, okay. this is definitely good. Like, we've had <laughs> the, the nachos, the Dorito nachos, but mm -hmm. as far as simplicity, a couple minutes to make, this is perfect. All right. I like this. Mm -hmm. I really like it with the salsa and just the sour cream, though. Sometimes I do that. Like, if yeah. I have Doritos, I'll just mm -hmm. put sour cream on them. And that's, good. Yeah. And that's awesome. Never, ever thought to do this, ever. So, while and now hits you up. So, you're getting, it seems like you're getting signs that you should be, you're going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Parents are all supportive. Yeah. At mm -hmm. this point. Uh, all right. So, take me on to the next chapter. So do you mm. do you do the Wild and Out audition? I did, but at the time I was 19. So everybody's, like, when I went there, um, when I'm around people I don't know, I'm not thinking, like, oh, this opportunity could change my life. I'm mm -hmm. just shy, like, because mm -hmm. I'm 19. These people are, like, way older than me. Like, they have very big personalities. Like, at the auditions, everybody was loud. It seemed like they kind of knew each other as mm -hmm. well. So I was just sitting there, like, just very, like, shy and timid. I didn't really say too much, and I feel like I didn't show – much of my personality. I didn't make it, but mm -hmm. well, obviously. But yeah, I feel if I could redo it, I would wish that they would hit me up at an older age mm -hmm. because I feel like that. I have um, the confidence now. Back then, I didn't. Now, what was your following at the time when they hit you up? Um, I think I was at two hundred k on on uh, Instagram, mm -hmm. and then. On YouTube. Now, YouTube is where you make most of your money. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't popping on YouTube back then. So I feel like they found me on Instagram. Okay. What was your YouTube following when you made the, like, $2,500 check? Oh, it started skyrocketing. Uh, so that was the year of 2020. Mm -hmm. This was October when I made the $2,500. Mm -hmm. So in December, I hit 100 k on YouTube. So I'm not sure where I was in October. Mm -hmm. Maybe, like, 80 k mm -hmm. I think I was at 80000 But I was coming up, like... 
that's when I popped off. Like some people, they would meet me and be like, "Oh, the quarantine queen." Mm -hmm. It was like that's when my channel was blown up during quarantine. And mm -hmm. were you doing any day jobs during quarantine? How were you surviving? I wasn't. Um, just social media, really. That's it. Mm -hmm. So how are you? Were you getting paid enough to survive off social media? Well, I lived with my mom. Well, I lived on campus, but mm -hmm. like when I would go home, I would be with my mom. So, mm -hmm. all I was right. Good. So yeah. you were good. So, but were your checks consistent? Like, are they monthly or? Yeah, once a month. Um. I was, I was getting also paid from like promos. People would pay me to like uh, post their businesses mm -hmm. on my account. What else? That's really it. I did have jobs here and there. I was always getting fired though. Like I worked at a hotel, but. What were you getting fired from? Like why? Yeah. I don't know. You just weren't into it. You weren't passionate about it? Yeah. So you're continuing with your YouTube channel and your social media. Right now you have almost a million subscribers on YouTube, which yeah. is a huge feat. It says is. you started your channel in 2013. Mm -hmm. What was like the hardest hiccup in that journey? Mm. Wait. Were there hard like moments? Like even coming up, did you feel the pressure to come up with content? Yeah, that's kind of how I feel right now. Um, so at first everything came to me naturally. Like I would just upload like once a month, which is not consistent at all. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll go like three months without uploading, but, um, I would just, I had my channel just for fun. Like, mm -hmm. um, I was creative. So I wanted to like showcase that. Mm -hmm. And of course I wanted followers too or subscribers. Um, but it, it became hard, like, when everybody wanted me to start posting more consistently because I wasn't used to it. When you say everybody, like, fans were mm -hmm. reaching out, like, when's your next post? Yeah. Or? And okay. I was like, dang, like, it's getting real. Mm -hmm. So I have to post, like, once a week. And I just graduated college, like, last May. So when I was in school, I had work due. Um, but I know I had to post, so mm -hmm. I was like, dang. Like, I had a, a lot to do. And then at this point, like, how consistent are the checks? Went just still once a month. Once a month. Mm -hmm. But the size of the checks are two. They go up and down. Like my biggest check that I got one month was forty thousand. Never seen forty thousand. Yeah. What never the seen heck? Again. You never that was seen... one time. That was one time. I was like but that was during that time I was coming up. So But was that during the pandemic? Mm, it was in twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. Yeah, so that's right after the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. So what did you do with the money? Um, I didn't do anything like big. I just kind of kept it. Do you still have it? Kinda. Well, or did you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're mm -hmm. you're managing your money mm -hmm. now. Do you have do, when you get checks like that? Like, who was the first person you called? And did you did you know that check was arriving, or does it come in the mail, or do they send you an email? How does it work? So if you go in the app on the studio app, um, mm -hmm. YouTube Studio. It'll like tell you what you're getting that month. When mm -hmm. I saw that, I was like, "What? Like that's crazy." But I was also getting like like ten thousand a month, mm -hmm. so it didn't really like uh, like affect ten thousand a month is really good money. Mm -hmm. And you are you telling your family like, "Yo, this is how much money I'm making." So that's the mistake I made. <laughs> I told my mom like I made a, my first eleven thousand in December of 2020, mm -hmm. and I was proud. So mm -hmm. I told my mom. She told the whole family like, now everybody knows how much I make. So yeah. And why, why is it like a not so good thing? Because um, people will start asking you for stuff. Like if you like make a lot of money, mm -hmm. they'll start like, I don't know. It's like, I don't know. Like I mean, when you guys go out to you, they be like, you got the bill. You got it. I like, right? like, yeah, I want to feel like, like, I don't know. Like when people buy stuff, like if I buy something for somebody, it's because I care about them or like, I don't know. I want to feel like somebody cares about me too. Like mm -hmm. that's one of my, um, what is the word? Pet peeve? Or? No, one of my, what is the word? Um, I forgot. But that's what, oh, my love language. One of my love languages is oh. like. Um, Gift giving? Yeah. Okay. So like when somebody buys me something, like I feel like, I don't know, I feel like they care. Even though yeah. that could not always be the case. But yeah. 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 But um, yeah, so I'm always having to buy people stuff. People expect me to like pay for everything. So that's why I just say anybody that got money, keep it on them. Did you ever have that conversation with your mom later? Mm -mm. So it, like if she were to listen to this interview, she would be like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that. I'm sure she knows. I think I did tell her like it does bother me when people ask me how much I make from like. 
Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Are you uncomfortable saying it on the show? Oh, no, I don't care. Okay. Like, yeah. We, just, like, we just talk about it on the show because there's, like, our show was, like, really created for the underdog. Yeah. And so we're trying to get them to, like, don't quit, even though it looks... Oh, yeah, don't quit. Keep know? going. I have my channel since 13. Now I'm living off of my channel. So I feel like anybody... Yeah. That was 10 years ago. So, well, 11 now because it's 2024. Yeah. But keep going. Keep but it going. wasn't until, like, years in till you got your first yeah. check, right? It wasn't, like, year one. Mm-mm. Uh, 2020 is when I got my first big check. Oh, that's seven years. Yeah, that's dedication. seven long years, and mm-hmm. no part of you was like during that journey, like maybe I should give up or maybe I should pause this. Mm-mm. I loved it so much. Really? Mm-hmm. Now, tell me about your concept process. Is it like you're going through everyday life and then you see something and it sparks? Like, tell me what that process looks like. Um, yeah, everyday life. Like, I'll see stuff. I'll be like, I need to make a skit about this. Or I'll see something trending and I'm like, I gotta hop on the bandwagon. Cause that's how videos go viral. You just gotta hop on what's trending. Like when they're trending. Mm-hmm. I have this, um, I don't know if you know him, but James Andre Jefferson Jr. That is such a long name. That is a long name. <laughs> but like- he's he's like a, he makes fun of like a lot of the celebrities and trending. But I remember when he was getting into social media, he had discovered that if you could strike while the trending was happening, like on topic, mm-hmm. then your stuff can trend with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very true. But the turnaround has got to be like a lot of pressure. Yeah, it is. Because it's like you got to come up with something quick. Like how the whole, like, what's something trending now? Um, or we could say like the like all the submarine stuff going on. Mm-hmm. Like if somebody makes like a review about how they feel, I feel like that's easier. But if you make like, you just hop on the bandwagon, talk about what's going on like in the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, like even the jaded Pinkett stuff that was oh, happening yeah. with Will Smith, I hopped on the train. Like I made a skit, like pretending I was her and I was getting interviewed. Mm-hmm. You just gotta hop on quick, do something creative. What was the one thing that like, cause you have nine hundred, almost a million followers on mm-hmm. YouTube. What is the one thing that you did that where you saw like a huge jump in your numbers? Um, I started doing these videos. Um, what is it? If slavery existed in twenty twenty one or. 2022, but I would make like parodies, but I get a lot of backlash from black people because they're like, oh, slavery's not a joke when they were not even running with Harriet and them. But <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But that's something a lot of people like, I guess. And then the online class videos, because in 2020, those were like, that's trending because like COVID and stuff. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people were taking classes online. Mm-hmm. So I hopped on that and we're well, not necessarily hopped on that. I created that wave, like the whole online classes, mm-hmm. parodies. Um, yeah. And then something. where did you learn how to edit? Are you editing your videos or are you having someone else edit? Oh, I edit them. Wow. And then you sit there with the lighting and the shooting and all of that. Mm-hmm. That's nuts. My brother taught me how to edit. We used to make videos together. We had a channel and everything. Where's your brother at now? He lives in Dallas. Um, he graduated college in like 2021. Yeah, he moved He's to He's older than you? One year. Mm-hmm. Or 11 months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like my best friend. Aw. I wish he was here. Oh, that's so sweet. Shout out, brother. Shout out to Charles, y'all. <laughs> so uh, does your brother have a YouTube channel or does he just kind of support yours? Oh, uh, he does, but he doesn't, he's not really active on there. We don't feel like he should be, but he's not active. Like, Is, is he choosing a different route from you? Uh, yeah, we did start together. Like mm-hmm. my channel now that I have now, me and him created that channel in 2013. And then I think it was called like Charles and Alicia. Mm-hmm. And Like, I don't know. He just, I don't know. I think when he went to college, he just kind of stopped. And he just wanted to do, what? do you know what he's majoring in? Uh, He did IT, informational technology. Okay, so Mm -hmm. both of you guys are choosing good, well, good careers Mm -hmm. and hard careers at that. Yeah, Yeah. I know IT is hard. So when you move to LA, like, what does that move look like? Um, I actually, so I graduated May 6th and I moved out here May 15th. Like, I was not doing no plan. 2023? Uh-huh. Oh, so you've only been out. You're a newbie. Yeah. Okay, so did you move in with your dad right away? Oh, no, I moved in by myself. Like, oh, I just came wow. up here alone. And what was the conversation with your mom looking like when you make this jump? Um, I was telling... Oh. I was telling everybody, like, before, I was like, y'all, I'm moving to L.A. People don't be taking me serious, but, mm-hmm. yeah, I moved out here. Um, Wait, you moved to L.A.? So tell me the story about you moving to L.A. So um, I was in college, like, coming home from classes, searching up, like, apartments in L.A. Mm -hmm. Um, 
calling them, getting a virtual tours, because of course I couldn't go out there, like, because mm-hmm. I had to be in school. Um, sorry. Mm-hmm. Would you have to burp? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I don't want to burp in the mic and mm-hmm. then the hate comments and stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so mm-hmm. I was searching up like um, apartments, um, yeah. like in LA. Yeah. Um, so I was doing like virtual tours. I didn't know downtown was as bad as it is. Oh, like, Skid Row and all that. You had a nice reality check. I all walked right. outside like, what is this? I didn't know what was going. So on. So you graduate and you're like, I know I'm moving to LA. Yeah. So and I was making good money at the mm-hmm. time for my YouTube channel. So I was like, I'm good. Like I'm gonna. Um, just move out here. And my dad, he moved out of LA 2022, but mm-hmm. I moved into LA 2023. Okay. So it was like, dang, like he left and I came. So okay. I was just out here alone. Um, when I first moved out here, I was so depressed, like very depressed. I started gaining a lot of weight because I was just eating like to fill my voids. Why like, were you depressed? Um, I was lonely. Um, I would reach out to people. I feel like I'm about to cry, but I'm not going to. Okay. On this show, people cry. Really? So you know, yeah, oh. right. This is the safest place to cry. All right. Yeah, but I was just very depressed, and I feel like nobody like back home like really cared. Mm-hmm. Um, I would reach out to people, like tell them how I felt, but people like literally take me as a joke. And I know I like make funny videos, and I like do stuff to like shield my emotions. Like I'll be funny or something, but I don't know. So when you were calling people saying what you were going through, were they doing that like cliche like, oh girl, you're lucky or it could yeah. be hard or it could be harder? I used to hate that. Like when people be like, the whole world in my life crashed to an end and then they'd be like, it could be harder. There's kids in another country. Yeah, like, you know, like, and you're like, yeah. I get that. But right now, <laughs> I need help. Yeah, I feel like all I had was myself. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm like so like independent because like I don't know. That's why I do everything on my own, move everything on my own. Like, I literally didn't have no help, like, um, physical help, like, moving any of my stuff. Like, I hired movers, hired somebody to move my car. Like, I just had to get and out of the And you're, like, 22, I'm assuming, at the time? or uh, Yeah, 22, I would 22, say early, early 20s, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're doing this all on your home. No mommy, daddy help. At this point, you're just 100% on your own. Yeah. But that's like what I wanted because like I want to be independent because I feel like I really feel like nobody be caring about how I feel. Like I genuinely feel like that. I feel like independence comes from a lot of neglect. It's almost like a survival spirit. Whenever I see someone that's like ultra independent, I'm like, they went through some stuff, you know? Yeah. Like a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wow. oh, okay. So when you move and you finally land, I'm hoping it's not in downtown LA because you say like it was culture shock. Yeah, I was like, what is is this a joke? Like literally, because I got my um apartment tour mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, is it a good area? Mm-hmm. I should have just came down here and looked. But he mm-hmm. was like, yeah, the area's good. There's a few homeless people downtown, but you'll be fine. No, not a few. It's was it like, in downtown? Everywhere. I live on Fourth Street. Like, oh wow. Yeah. So wow. Okay. So you're like by it. Like all in it. It's like a yeah. It, oh, but you know what's crazy? Cause some of those lofts down there are really nice. So I could see you looking at the loft like, oh yes. girl, I'm about to come. I'm about yes. to live my best life. <laughs> that's you what pull I up, and there's like, you know, ten million homeless people, and that that's like a culture shock. That is very scary to mm-hmm. like. Okay, so you're making it work though. Now, are you doing anything else? Are you just a hundred percent YouTube, a hundred percent short film, and then have you developed your own little crew to survive LA? Um, I do have a few people that I um I just got done filming a short film. Mm-hmm. It's called Los Angeles, L O S T Angeles. Okay. So it's just about like me narrating my life here, um, crazy situations and stuff. I did find some people, but the people out here are so weird. Like mm-hmm. they'll like um like when I first meet somebody, I don't tell them like what I do, mm-hmm. like initially, because people have ulterior motives. Mm-hmm. But when I meet people, they, so like, like if someone meets you, what do you tell them? I just talk to them like I just mm-hmm. don't even bring it up. Okay. I, don't know. Um, I feel I like that's the second question when you whenever you meet someone in LA, it's like, hi, my name is, and they're like, what, what do, do you do? do? Yes, that's so true. The one thing I liked about the pandemic was it was the first time people stopped asking what you do. It's more like, how are you doing? Yeah. And that was like, I think the most beautiful thing about the pandemic. It was also people going to people's houses and just eating around a table. 
playing board games, like doing stuff not at a restaurant, you know, or what have you. I think there was something really beautiful in that space of we're all trapped in a nightmare together. Mm -hmm. But I hate, I absolutely hate that about LA where it's like, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? So, but you moved here in the, what do you do era? Yeah. So when they ask you, what do you do? What do you say? Um, I told them like, oh, I direct, produce film. I do comedy sketches. But people are full of shit. Um, can I cuss? Yeah, you can curse. People are full of shit. So I feel like they probably like, oh, hmm. Yeah. Just another one of those. But yeah. I actually am like Yeah, doing you're doing it. it. Like yeah. you're making money. You don't you're not working at Target. You're a hundred percent doing mm-hmm. you. So I feel like when they like first, mm-hmm. like people would treat me like like I'm just like nobody. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, it's fine. Treat me however. Mm-hmm. But I'm Well, show it's because you. you look very young. Yeah. So they're like yeah, they're, they're more like aspiring or what have you. Mm-hmm. Did you watch the Tyler Perry documentary? No. You didn't? A lot of people keep telling me to watch it. I don't know. Bruh, let me tell you, girl. I watched, I cried a couple times. Really? I didn't even know his story. To I know he was homeless, right? Well, he did end up with a little bit of homelessness, but he came from oh. a lot of abuse. Like, oh. I did not know that. Yeah, it was kind of interesting. That's probably why he writes what about, about what he writes yeah, about. Yeah, 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 definitely. That's good. Well, that's not good, but it's good that he like shows mm-hmm. that in movies, like that people can get through it. Do you ever make fun of the characters in your family, or like mm-hmm. play around with the characters in your family, or develop characters based- from people in my family mm-hmm. um, or friends? No, I don't know where they come from. <clears throat> I feel like I got like ten different personalities, so I'll just pick one, mm-hmm. play the character. Yeah, because like the mother I play in my films, like sometimes I play like a mom. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not how my mom acts at all. I don't know where that character stems from. Mm-hmm. But my mom, she's like very nice, very like quiet and reserved. But the mom that I play like in my films is very like the nuts. opposite. Yeah, very loud, very like I don't know, just crazy. And my mom is not like that at all. So I don't know why I do that or like where I got it from. But that's probably one of my favorite characters, like playing as the mom. What is the day in the life of you now that you're in LA? Um Get up, go to the gym, uh, come home, shower, make a video. Um, and then after that, the rest is history. When you say make a video, like just edit, like what's that process? Like a couple of hours? Yeah. Maybe like four hours max um, for a YouTube video. Make the video, edit it, upload it the same day. Probably going to do that after the interview. Really? Mm-hmm. Probably going to make the video. And your money from YouTube, do you feel like it's sustainable or is it like the entertainment business where it's like up, down, up, down, up, down? Yeah, it'd be up and down. Like one month, go from 40000 that month to the next month, I'm making 3000 and 5000 10000 back down to three. Like it's up and down. But I saved enough like before I moved here mm-hmm. just in case it like fluctuates. fluctuates. Mm-hmm. And then do you put yourself on payroll? What does that mean? Like uh, we were talking about, I think it was with Brandon Rogers, who's a other another YouTuber. It's like when you have your your money goes to a corporation, or does it go to you? Oh, it goes to me. Okay, so yeah, traditionally you would you know create a corporation and then maybe get like an ADP, and they'll cut your salary, and then you can kind of like live on a more budget and then build cash flow in the, in the business. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's a lot I don't know, but I love yeah. to learn. Yeah, yeah. We, we could talk after camera to, like, yeah. kind of fix that. But I'm guessing right now, do you put yourself on a strict budget? Like, this is my monthly and I don't go over? Or do you just be like, it's $10,000 a month? Um, I just don't go crazy with spending. Like, I'll just spend my money, like, how I would, like, if I made, like, $5,000 a month. Like, that's, like, kind of how I spend my I don't do too much, like, at all. Mm-hmm. I'm well, very cheap. <laughs> what advice would you give to someone that's trying to get into the game right now? Um, keep going, and if the people are supporting you coming up, make sure you lock in with them um, once you come up. Because, um, yeah, all the people that, like, are around you when you're coming up, just know those people are loyal and they like you for you. Cause mm-hmm. when you get like, I feel like where I am, I'm not like, I don't know. Like mm-hmm. I need a better heart of discernment because some people just come into my life or try to come into my life because of who I am. So yeah, if you're coming up, make sure the people around you stay around them. Don't make any new friends. Yeah. I, I tell myself that my high school friends are my Mm-hmm. It sounds terrible. I have plenty of friends, but I always feel like my friends from high school are my real friends. Mm-hmm. Like, Same. 
you know the good, the bad, the ugly, you know where I'm from, where I'm going, you know everything about me. And if I don't talk to you for a year, I know we could pick up the phone and I'm yeah. not getting like, you ain't call me and da 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 da. And they're like clocking or whatever, you know? Yeah, locked in. Yeah, I went to New York recently. My girlfriend from high school, she was like, here's my car, here's my car seat, have fun. Like, you know, like, I got you type, you know, it was like just very much like family and we don't talk every day. It's just like, I'm coming, girls, whatever. Or if I'm going through a breakup, I've had a girlfriend like get on a plane, get a bunch of ice cream and candy and like we watch Pretty Woman and a bunch of just silly stuff and all the way from New York. And I'm like, you're a real friend. Like, that's a real friend. Mm -hmm. And those are rare... But how's dating in LA? Um, do you have you tried dating in LA yet? No. Yeah, I feel like the the trickery is LA guys are different. Yeah, everyone's like kind of. I think everyone in LA is kind of opportunistic. But I would, I think the dangerous part of being in social media would be that. I think even bigger than being a celebrity, like if you're big on social media, everybody want to date you. Yeah, they and they just want some clout. But who knows? Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't dated in LA. Okay. Probably not ever going to. Are you single right now or are you not single? Because you said you're not going to. Um, You're in a relationship? Yeah. You can say it. It's complicated. It's complicated. Complicated is never good. It's never good. That's what I'm saying. Like, see? See? If the relationship confuses you, leave. Yeah. I have... I, my friends tell me all the time... They're like, you're so good at spotting a red flag. There's like, there's nobody better at spotting a red flag than you. But for whatever reason, you will spot the red flag and go, hmm, maybe that's just like a slowdown. Maybe that's a maybe. They'd be like, no, it's a red flag. You got to respect the red flag and put it in its place. Yeah. And I think as a woman, it just boils down to like, I don't know. It always boils down to like women's like, kryptonite which is like knowing your worth that is i don't know how we come up with our worth or knowing our worth i think that's just a woman's greatest challenge see that's why i'm not dating in la because i know my worth you know your worth, Mm -hmm. but you're in something complicated yeah it's like a bunch of red flags and there's a lot of green flags as well you know but red means stop i don't know i just turned 40 so now i haven't turned 40 yet gonna be 40 soon and i'm learning like at this point you just gotta respect the red flag Mm because the deeper you go the harder it is to to get out you know and i'm just that's just me being totally honest yeah you know the more invested you are and i also have this other philosophy when it comes to relationships whoever invests more loses the most that's true yeah so especially if it's over yeah yeah, yeah. Whoever invests more, whoever, and that doesn't just mean monetary wise. It means time wise. It just means like if the scale is not tipped evenly, mm-hmm. I promise you, you will be the one that's hurt more in the end. So, dang, that's yeah. a crazy way to look at. It. No, that's a good way yeah. actually. Well, that's why you ever hear people say like you got to match the other person's energy. Yeah. Oh, you gave this. I'll match that. You know. Mm-hmm. When I was young, I would date a guy. Boy, I'll go all out. You know, just. You know. Same. That's how I am. I like to like spoil people. Mm-hmm. Um, I like to be spoiled too. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I feel like I always give so much of myself, mm-hmm. and I need to just protect my heart at mm-hmm. this point. Like I need to give what I give to that person. I need to give that to myself. Mm-hmm. I'm learning that right now, and I'm old as heck. Well, you're old. not old. I'm 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 up there. I've been trying to avoid the topic for a while. No, you look very young though. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else does, do people just don't know about you? Um, I'm a very introverted person. I know sometimes I come off as very like, um, outgoing, which I am online. Sometimes I am in person, but I have to be like very, very comfortable. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm just a very introverted person and I'm always sad and people don't be believing me because I joke around a lot. I heard comics or like or comedians and that that line of work they're the most sad, mm-hmm. which is crazy because they bring the most joy. Joy. It's because we have to go through things alone. Because like, 
I'm not sure. I can't speak for anybody else, but I know with me, people don't take me serious, and I'm also supposed to be the person that makes everybody else laugh. Mm -hmm. So it's like I don't even feel uh, comfortable coming to people sometimes. I don't want to bring them that energy, and then I don't know. I don't. Know. We just. I feel like we go through a lot of stuff alone, like a lot of our emotions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But it makes you stronger in the end. It does. I mean, as long as you got that solid one or two, I think you're good. And then, do you have mentors? Mm, no. What? Yeah. What? You need to get some. I don't care how old you are. Like, you could be my age. I still look for mentors. I'm always looking for a mentor. Anyone that's like even semi where I want to be at or mm -hmm. like just different from me, I'm like, yo, can you be my mentor? Can you teach me something new? I um, wish. Yeah, girl. Well, um, I'm here in L.A., so I definitely, if you ever need a mentor -y. Yeah. Matter of fact, you could be my mentor in some areas. You could be can mine, too. We can, we can mentor each other. other. So, yeah, do okay. have a mentor. Okay, yeah. good, because, you know, I'm struggling with YouTube. I know my uh, the girl that runs my YouTube, um, She we can monetize now. And she's always like, monetize the channel. I'm like, we're going to get five cents. <laughs> you should still monetize it. That's you what she mon says. She's like, girl, I'm like, you you should monetize. You gonna have to. You know what? That's it why I said up. we're gonna mentor. We're gonna mentor each other. Yeah. Oh my you know? goodness! I can't believe you. Didn't and you have the ability to. Yeah, we do. And she's been on me like just fill out the paperwork. I'm like, for what? You need to do it. Like yeah. your money could be growing. So there's a threshold on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, hundred dollars. So after you hit a hundred, they deposit whatever into your account. So right now, like, um, look, like all of your views. I don't know, like add it up. If they make a hundred, I'm sure you're at a hundred dollars. So you like, I don't you think we had a hundred, like but I didn't know that's how it works. I just thought maybe like if I hit like 5,000 subscribers, then I would hit monetization. But if I don't hit it, if it, is it only from that date forward that it accrues or they to look at the pre previous data? Just from that date forward. That's why I say you need to get oh. on Oh, yeah. See, so like, if see you look at you now, teaching us. Yeah. Okay. So like, they're not going to give you any money from like anything before or today. If you monetize today. So when they gave me the opportunity, that's when I was supposed to do it. When did they tell you? Probably a couple of months ago. You uh, should do yeah. it. Yeah. That's but it ain't, it's not like I missed out on that much. I mean, yeah. we got a small little. But I do. I would be very happy over a $100 check just because it's like that milestone of like, yes. oh, shit, we did I, it. I, <laughs> I remember interviewing like Country Wayne and he was talking about his like, he monetized his channel during the pan pandemic. It was like getting like forty to 100000 per yeah. Hundred thousand? Yeah. How much did he say? Yeah, he said he was getting like hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand. I was like, I That's was a like, lot. Yeah, and it was like during the pandemic he monetized it. Wow. Could you imagine how much money he probably missed out on? Yeah. Because I did not know that's how it works. Wow. Yeah. yeah, you should monetize. Yeah. Yeah, and you should be my mentor. You heard it here first. All right. Well, is there anything else we're missing in your story? You think that we um, didn't cover? Let me think. Oh, I do stand up comedy sometimes. So, what? yeah. How's it going? Um, I don't do it anymore really. But my last show was in November, November eighth. That was the last show I did. Um, it's good, but like I don't really focus on that really. What made you get into stand up? My dad. He was a stand up comedian out here as well. Mm -hmm. But he and moved then, back to where? Uh, Texas. Oh, he's in Texas. Is he in Austin? No, I know all the comics are moving to Austin. He's in Houston. Okay. Okay. But him, I don't know. That's where he's from. And then my mom is from Missouri. Mm -hmm. But they met in college. Such a sweet love story, like love and basketball. Oh, for real? Mm -hmm. Is it really like a love and basketball story? Well, love and track, I guess. They both were in track. Okay. But are they and still they... together? Or... Mm -hmm. No. Okay, okay. They should be. Why? Because they're like best friends or something? No, because they're my parents. And I, they need to be, even though they're both dating other people, mm -hmm. I don't care. Aww. Yeah. That's so sweet. But did you grow up in two parent household? Oh no, mm -hmm. they split at two when you were two, right? So it was just me, my mom, and my brother. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. There was something else. It literally like I was like, don't forget to ask this, and then I forgot. Was it something Shit, deep? Yeah, it was something dip deep too. I need oh. to be deeper. I think I got a little. Oh, I deep. wanted to ask you. I noticed you do do meet meet and greets, don't mm -hmm. you? I did one. You did one. Uh -huh. How? What made you do it? And like, what was the experience like? Um. What made me do it? Um, this girl I went to school with, she um, she moved out there, 
And she like does a lot of work in Atlanta. So then she like set up this meet and greet with this restaurant. So it'll bring people to the restaurant and then bring people to meet me. So mm -hmm. it was like kind of a collaborative thing. Um, the experience, so it was like in like a small country part of Atlanta or mm -hmm. Georgia. I thought it was in Atlanta, but mm -hmm. I was on there promoting like, hey, ATL. So now a lot of people came, mm -hmm. but it was still good to have the experience though. Would you ever do that again? And probably in a different location, yes. Like Texas, when I went to Texas this, or last year, what month was this? It was like September or October. It was in October. Uh, I was getting stopped. <clears throat> I was getting stopped a lot. Like I have a big fan base in Texas, Dallas. Okay. Okay. I would do it there. All right. Well, and then if you were to do it, would you do stand up or would you just like talk about your experiences as a YouTuber? Um, I would probably just talk about, ooh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, I would probably talk about like, I don't know, my experiences, have people come up, because I have a few songs like on my channel that everybody mm -hmm. knows, because it's like my outro songs, intro songs. And I'll probably have them come up and see like who could rap it the best, mm -hmm. um, do a giveaway, um, take pictures, stuff like that. I wouldn't do stand-up though, because my uh, fan base is younger. Mm -hmm. My stand-up is like for adults, so. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, where can we keep up with you if you do do stand up? Do you announce it on your Instagram mm -hmm. and share with our f listeners what your Instagram is? My Instagram is A L Y S H A B U R N E Y underscore Alicia Bernie underscore. It's my only page. That's your only page. Mm -hmm. And then you, you, so you just have Instagram. You're not doing TikTok or any of those guys? Oh, yeah. I do. I have TikTok. I have a million on there, 1.5 million. And was it like instant or did you have to organically grow it? Yeah, organically. I started in co like during COVID. COVID. Mm -hmm. COVID was like the the real, real pivot, pivotal moment for you. Mm -hmm. Wow. I blew up on everything. Yeah. During COVID. Mm -hmm. That three, that two years changed your life. It did. Everybody says how COVID affected them like horribly. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, COVID blessed me. Wow. Shout outs to COVID. Shout out to you, COVID. <laughs> And I uh, never caught it. You never caught what? Yeah, girl, I done had COVID so many times. I'm like, eh. really? I had. Oh yeah, I've caught it a bunch of times. Or maybe I caught it and didn't know. Oh yeah, maybe you're one of those lucky ones. Cause when I first got hit with it, I knew. Oh wow, I knew. Yeah. But thanks for cooking for. Well, thanks for your evening midnight snack. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for blessing us with uh, your energy. Uh, and uh, thanks to all our listeners. Peace out, guys.